Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, for your forward looking, seeing everything that we would need for this day and preparing it and delivering it to us. We thank you for it, for healing our bodies, God putting us in our right minds, God giving us the impetus to do your will. We thank you for it. We thank you for every need being supplied. And God, we thank you for every heart being merry. We thank you most of all for your indwelling Holy Spirit who leads us into all of your truth. We ask today that your kingdom will come in this place as your will is being done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you have your Bibles this morning. Go with me to the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 6. Hallelujah. Verse 6 reads, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. And today I want to continue talking to you on the gifts, but today I want this topic to stick in your mind. Speaking God. Speaking God. Now y'all know how to speak Satan, right? Yes. So today we want you to. Amen. Be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now the issue of course is that in verse 6 when we begin to talk about the gifts, let me assure you that Prophecy is only one of the seven that he mentions. He does not give any greater weight to one than he does the other. Amen. The other six, of course, let me give them to you. I don't want to talk about them until we get to them. Serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leadership, and showing mercy. Understand that all of these things are gifts from God. We call them grace gifts. We said it is the charismata for God's great, according to God's grace. So it's according to his charis. So it's his charismata for his charis. Now, in the Greek, when we look at the word prophecy, uh, it has several different meanings. And we're going to try to explain most of them today. Now, I also want to start by telling you that it is the most misunderstood gift and it is the most abused gift. Amen. 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 Churches have caused people to walk in error because of the abuse of this gift. Jesus. So the first thing I want to tell you about prophecy, prophecy is this, is that uh, there's an old scripture that we used to use many years ago in Proverbs 18, uh, verse 21, some of you are familiar with it. It says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Why do I bring that to your attention? Because we told you last week that each one of us has been given a measure of faith to use these gifts, which means that all of you can prophesy. But the thing that most of us forget is that whatever you prophesy, you become responsible for. But you become responsible to God. See, and we forget that uh, all of our words as believers have power. 
All of our words as believers have power. So if I say it, then it's probably going to come to pass. Now, let me say, let me say this because we're kind of careless with words. We say most anything we want to say. And most of us, after we said it, walk away. Not understanding that that word, well, maybe by today, we'll figure it out. How about that? <laughs> How about that? So when the Bible talks about prophecy, it is actually speaking the will of God. It's speaking the will of God. Uh, here's, the, here's the issue. If I am going to prophesy, I cannot speak the words of one I do not know. Y'all understand that? You can't just pick a scripture and throw it at somebody when you have not lived the scripture. You don't know that God. And you certainly can't be using him if you don't know him. Because, you know, in the world system, we use people we don't know. But that's why you can't do this in the kingdom. Yeah, are y'all still? So the Bible says that every word of prophecy should be used according to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to do what? The Bible says to uh, edify, exhort, and encourage. We, we're supposed to feel like when somebody prophesies to us or gives us a word from the Lord, it should be something that makes us feel better, not makes us feel worse. Now, having said that, before I go any further, that means that everything that you say to somebody that makes them feel bad didn't come from the Lord. All right, now, so it's a good time to tell you that uh, you can prophesy from the other fellow, too. He is a spirit. Come on. And if you've got one foot in his kingdom... <laughs> You can see some stuff, which will make you say some stuff. Do we understand that? That's why when you have some deep mystical revelation, do you hear what I just said? It did not come from God. Amen. Amen. Now y'all looking at me now. Well, Pastor, I... I I heard a lot of stuff that I know God was saying. It. <laughs> well, you have to understand two things. <laughs> and I guess I had to always get, you know, I have this thing planned out where I'm going to teach you this and this and this. And this but I always get off track. So let's, let's just go off for just a moment. We're not going to go off the script. But what we're going to do is go out of order. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah. Just turn there, Hebrews 1 and 1. Amen. And what you'll find in Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says that God, and I don't have mine in front of me, so I'm just going to tell you what it says in, in paraphrase, that God in the past has spoken to us, oh, there it is, uh, in various ways uh, by the fathers and by the prophets. But verse 2 says what? In how many days has spoken to us by whom he has appointed what? Now, so the Bible teaches us this, that when it comes to the word of God, that God was so concerned about you knowing him that he sent a representative of himself in the form of his son and he gave him everything that he needed to know about him. God gave Jesus everything that he needed. Look at verse 3 of that. The Bible says in verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 1. Okay. He going to say it. <laughs> but it, the Bible says that he is the express image. Isn't that what he says? Amen. He is the icon of God. Amen. 
He is the what? The icon of God. Y'all know about icons because on your computer, when you click on an icon, you get what's behind the icon. The Bible says that he was the expressed image of God. Now, having said that, you need to understand that you cannot prophesy anything that is not in the character of the one who is the total revelation of God. So if, listen, if it's not revealed by Jesus, then you can't get some deep mystical thing that nobody knows. Are y'all still with me? Are you sure you're with me here? Because we do a lot of stuff that the Lord showed you that don't nobody know anything about. But it's impossible for you to have some revelation that's not revealed because the Bible says that everything has been revealed in Jesus. All right, I'm going to take you one step further. Uh, in Exodus, y'all know the story of Moses. <laughs> Moses was called by God, and he was called to be a deliverer. Y'all know the deal, right? And in the process of time, Moses was encountered uh, by God, or God encountered, Moses encountered God in the form of a burning bush, and the bush talked to Moses. All right? We call it direct revelation. God said, boom. Now, remember this is the Old Testament. Cause y'all. <laughs> but then when you get to uh, uh, chapter four, you find that Moses had some issues because Moses said that he had uh, a speech impediment. And he didn't want to be out there looking like somebody crazy. You don't go to Pharaoh and start stuttering. Amen. And I'm not going to fake it because y'all think I'm picking on people that stutter. <laughs> but let's go to Exodus. I'm talking about it, so let's look at it. <laughs> Exodus 4. Now, if y'all really paying attention today, we'll be out of here in a few minutes. I already know this stuff. See? So. <laughs> so if we if we here for a little while, it's cause. <laughs> All right. Look at uh, Exodus chapter six. The Bible says in verse uh, two. Let's read that. It says, "And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord." I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, he says, as God Almighty. He says, but, but he says, by my name, uh, Lord, I was not known to them. Now, he said, I, I, I appeared to them, but they didn't know who I was. All right? Y'all still with me? All right, skip all the way down to uh, verse 12. The Bible says, And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, The children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me? For I, here I am, am of uncircumcised lips. Y'all still with me? Now here's what he said, basically. How did you, do you expect me to go to Pharaoh and him receive me when the people I'm leading won't receive me. Woo, that's a good place to talk for a season there, but I'm not. I'm not because I want to stay on track. But what I'm saying to you is that it is difficult for any leader to lead people who don't hear. Them. That's because, that's because faith comes by hearing. And most people don't hear well. That's because they don't exercise faith. They operate in sense. So instead of faith, there's flesh. And if you operate in the flesh, you won't hear 
what the Spirit of God's saying because the natural mind can't conceive the things. Amen. Keep your finger where you are. <laughs> Go to Matthew chapter 10. You got to stay where we were, Zion, because you, you get me messed up if I have to go back. Make sure I'm at the right place I'm telling you to go. Matthew chapter uh, okay, in M Matthew chapter 10, the Bible says this, uh, in verse 18, he says, you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them, to the Gentiles. That's the same situation Moses was in. Look what he says. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given in that hour that you should speak. You understand that? So if you had your prepared prophecy... All right, back to Exodus again. Here's Moses not knowing what to say. Are y'all still with me? So the Bible says this, verse 13. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Moses and Aaron, and gave them a command for the children of Israel and for Pharaoh. Now notice this. When God starts to give instructions, he said, I'm giving this to Moses and Aaron, and I'm giving it for the people who wouldn't listen to you. That's the children of Israel and Pharaoh. Amen. Now, that right here is why you need prophecy, because the Lord sometimes has to speak to some of y'all. And y'all still won't hear. Amen. Okay, we, we, we good? Okay, so he says this. Uh, uh, he says, and for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now, you know, everybody thinks that God doesn't have a sense of humor, right? So here he is. He drops this in verse 13. And then what did he do next? Went on to something else. <laughs> hmm? Didn't he? Mm -hmm. And he didn't come back anymore until verse 28. Now God, not like me, doesn't, let, doesn't lose his train, his train of thought. He stays, he stays on course. So he goes all the way to verse 28, and here's what he said in verse 28. And it came to pass on the day the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt that the Lord spoke to Moses saying, now notice that phraseology. Are y'all still following me? He says, he, on the day the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt that the Lord spoke to Moses. Huh? I am the Lord. Moses, you understand who I am? You know, because sometimes that's what I have to say. <laughs> Around here. Amen. I, sometimes I have to direct people. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I said, let me walk out here and see what it says on the door. Because they might have... <laughs> It might have changed the door. Might say ex pastor. You know, I, I don't know what it said. But last time I looked. Lord, I'm messing with y'all now, right? Okay, he says this. He says, <laughs> he says it, <laughs> that I say to you, all right? Now, watch this. Get all of this together because he said, speak to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, all that I say to you. This is God talking to Moses. But Moses said before the Lord, behold, here we go again. I am of uncircumcised lips. 
how shall Pharaoh heed me? Now, God could have really, you know, been God and said, just do what I tell you. But that's not he, how he works. The reason that God does not give emphatics is because God, by nature, is a trainer. He's a teacher. He doesn't want you just to accept something because somebody said so. That's why you tell children, because I said so, they say, oh, that ain't going to work. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So God will never just say, do this. And you say, oh, okay, Lord. That's because most of us will do it then because we're scared because the Lord's talking. But the next time the same circumstance arises, we won't do it because we did it out of fear. Amen. And what God is saying is, rather than tell you that, uh, hey, just do what I tell you, he said, I'm going to show you Amen. how things get done in my, in my world. Amen. All right? Amen. So let's look at chapter 7. This is what God starts to show us something. And I want you to get this because... Right here, that's why I say, if you get this, then we might be out of here in about the next five minutes. Seriously. So the Lord said to Moses, come on, listen now. See, I have made you. Is that in your Bible? Did he say like God? Hmm. Watch this now. I have made you as God to Pharaoh. And here it is. Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Hmm? Hmm? Okay, let's keep going then. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron, your brother, shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of his land. Here it is. God is showing us something. God said, listen, Moses, I'm going to make you like me. When you say it, they're going to do what you say. But just so there's no question about it, you just tell Aaron. Okay, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me, let me, cut, cut. Can I say I'd, I'd get you out of here quick, though? The anointing of God was on Moses and Aaron so that when God spoke to Moses, Moses was anointed to speak as God and Aaron was hearing as God speaking, which gave him the anointing to speak what Moses said as though it was coming from the mouth of God. So the prophet then, come on now, say it with, the prophet then speaks what he hears from the mouth just as though it was God. So then, you have to be, that's why that verse says, according to, to the faith that you exercise. You can't speak a thing that you don't believe. Amen. Oh, you can. It's called lying. Amen. But isn't that one of the sins God hates? Yeah. Hmm? And by the way, if you ever want to check, you know, what sins are important, check the ones that God says, I hate. You might want to know who. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so the Bible says then that Moses was to speak. Aaron was to repeat what he says. And the results of what he said would cause Pharaoh to let the people go. No. <laughs> no. He said, you tell them what I said, and when you tell them what I said, he going to get mad. 
And, and if you read on, and I don't have time to do Exodus for you, but what he said was, I need you to do this because Pharaoh won't respond unless you go to him like, like somebody who has the same kind of authority. Now here's what, Pharaohs in that day were divinely inspired. So they were like, you know, uh, 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 anointed by the devil. Because they operated on the other side. So in order to speak to a man who thinks he's God, you got to talk to him like God. If you go to a bully and say, uh, uh, please, Mr. Bully, uh, I appreciate it if you just stop, stop picking on me. He's going to beat you to a mess. But if you go to, well, I can't tell you how to go to a bully because folks will be watching and say, don't do that. But if you go to him right, People always say you shouldn't beat your children because that don't change anything. And I say to that, you just didn't beat them right. <laughs> uh, <rub. laughs> so I can't talk about that. <laughs> so, so. Oh, y'all, if you're, you're a parent, you know. You know, you be messing with children sometimes. Ooh. All you need is one good whipping for a child. You don't ever have to whip them again. Say, hey, you, you remember? I'm good. <laughs> so here's what God did with Moses, and here's what God does for you. He gave Moses his divine authority. And in the New Testament, God gives you his divine authority. Well, Pastor, I did not see that in the scriptures. The Bible says he sent his express image. In other words, here's, here's what I want you to understand. Jesus is the character of God. Amen. Come on, let me say it over here. Amen. Jesus is the character of God. You want to know what God is like, you check out Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen? So the Bible says that he has placed, Jesus has placed himself in you. You then operate in the character of God. Amen. Amen. Huh? What's his name? And if I had to say, what is his name? I don't know. His name is holy. So the character that we possess is one of holiness, which means we are sanctified or set apart so that he can use us. If you are not sanctified, you can't prophesy. Amen. You still with me? Whew. Now, let me give you, I had all these definitions I was supposed to get you, but y'all got me off track. Let me give them to you now because I want you to, I, I, you know. <laughs> the Bible says that, uh, uh, <laughs> That any teaching or preaching should be in proportion to the faith of the person that's doing it. Oh, let me talk about that for just a minute. When the Bible says uh, in proportion to the faith, it's not talking about the faith of the person, but the faith as a doctrine. The person must have the doctrine of faith in order to have the faith to prophesy. All right. Mark 11. God knows we got to keep. Mark 11. 
23 says, have faith in God. And the literal translation is have the faith of God. The Bible says that if you have that kind of faith, then whatever you say, the faith that he's talking about, the faith, is the doctrine of faith. And okay, very quickly, speaking gifts carry the authority of God because of the source of the gift. The source of the gift is God. But the place that the gift originates in the person is in the heart. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, what is it, verse 45, 46, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, uh, I believe, so I spoke. Y'all, yep. oh, yep. so, so what he's saying is, when I exercise the doctrine of faith, I believe that Jesus Christ died, up, Romans chapter 10 says, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if I believe in my heart, Amen. huh, yes. and then confess that with my Amen. mouth. Amen. So you see the process. I can't speak it as the authority of God unless I first internalize it. Amen. I only and I'm able to internalize it by the uh, uh, amount of faith that I exhibit when I speak it. Amen. I have to believe God as I'm speaking because I already read to you in Matthew chapter 10 that God has given it to me. Yes as I'm speaking, yes. because I believe that he is using me for his glory. Amen. See, that's why I told you last week, we believe in prophetic preaching. In other words, I don't, I don't have to stand up and say, thus saith the Lord, because I'm saying it to you now. Amen. The Lord's already said it, and I'm telling you. Amen. But you have to keep in mind that uh, when I told you faith comes by here in Rome, I'm in Romans, Revelations chapter two and, and, and let me see what verse that is. I got to get it in my head. I don't know what it is, but you can look it up. It says uh, uh, <laughs> when, when he began to speak to the churches, he said, uh, let him who has an ear hear what the spirit says. And then he said the same thing in each one of the churches as he went through in chapter three. He said, let him who has an ear hear. And what I'm saying to you is that faith then connects with faith. Amen. Come on now. Amen. If I'm speaking in faith, Amen. you have to be hearing in faith. Amen. And if you're not hearing in faith, then our faith is not connecting. Amen. And what I'm saying to you doesn't matter. Amen. All right. Amen. We only get the results of the prophetic word Amen. when we attach faith to it. So when you get in a line, somebody's prophesying to you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you walk away saying, oh, he said, I'm going to get a new car. You ain't done nothing. Amen. Wasted my time, your time. Amen. Because you're not believing for anything that will advance the kingdom. Amen. You, Amen. you believing for. Amen. They will say na narcissistic. Okay? Woo. <sighs> oh, well, let me give you this too. <laughs> Prophesying according to the New Testament is not always predicting the future. That's what we want to hear. It often is uh, effectively communicating God's message. In other words, instead of trying to make predictions, I'm just saying what God said. So the Bible says that the fullness of God's word comes in two forms. 
One, the living word, which is Jesus Christ. And two, the written word, which is the scripture. Amen. So prophecy is inspired teaching. It's inspired teaching. Anyone speaking with divine authority, whether with reference to the past, present, or future, is considered a prophet. Are y'all still with me? All right. Now, let me go on here. The use of the word prophet then is significant in that it defines a prophet as one who spoke not his own thoughts, but what he received from God. So the prophet is always the middleman. Now, can I stop for a moment? When we start talking about the prophet, I need to tell you that we are confusing the gift and the office. And the only way I can keep distinguishing it, I say prophet and you think office. But what we're teaching is spiritual gifts, Amen. not office. Every person who is born again, operating under the spirit of God, can operate in all those offices interchangeably. That's why it's difficult for you to identify yourself. Hmm? All right. I got to whisper this because I don't want my TV audience to know what I'm about to tell you. <clears throat> Offices, offices that we should be concerned about are really wrapped up in one. The pastor. Yeah. Amen. Pastor got to teach. Yeah. Pastor evangelizes. Yeah. He prophesies. Yeah. He plants churches. Yeah. Huh? Amen. He does all. The, Amen. Instead, I'm going to change it. Instead of won't he do it, don't he do it? <laughs> So if he's a good pastor, good pastor teacher, then he will interchangeably flow in these offices. See, when you try to identify a gift, it creates a problem for you because you think you're supposed to do just that. Do you all understand this? Okay. And folks, and another thing. <laughs> when it comes to speaking gifts, we still have to be careful. Because when Paul begins to talk about, I'm messing you up now. When Paul begins to talk about speaking gifts, the one the church was having the most problems with was speaking in tongues. And most of the people who were speaking in tongues were speaking out of order. So what Paul did is Paul, he did, let me do this real fast and I'll talk about it some other point in time, but I just need to get out of this. Paul said, in order for me to help you understand this, I, did, I have to, to spend a whole chapter, chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. teaching you about the greatest gift, mm -hmm. which is love. Mm. Huh? So then he goes to chapter 14, and then he says, hey, if you didn't get this, you won't get this. And that, that. All right. If you don't get the love. That's why you are reckless. Going around prophesying all the time. Hubba Bubba. Trouble Trouble. <laughs> he cometh in a Chevrolet. So requir <laughs> requirements <laughs> a prophet of the Lord of a prophet a requirements of a prophet. I'm, I'm <sighs> I got to stop tickling myself. Mm. Is that he must know Jesus Christ before he can proclaim the good news about Christ? Amen. 
Now, I turn the page so I can get to the end of this, as I promised. <laughs> the Jews divided time into three areas. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, they talked about uh, the present age, which is evil. And then they talked about the age to come, mm -hmm. which is what they consider to be the golden age of God. Amen. But the dividing point is what we call the day of the Lord. Hmm? So the Bible says the day of the Lord, when it comes, uh, is when Jesus begins to take authority. So what happens is from the day of the Lord, that's when Jesus first came on the scene. Are y'all with me? The Bible says Time started to change. That means all the old things are passing away. Y'all still with me? The age of incompleteness is gone. The time for human guessing and groping is gone. Are y'all still with me? And the Bible says in the new age, uh, Christ is with us. And therefore, we don't have to be wandering and figuring it out. See, the problem is that we still think that we're living in the old time. That's why we will call up the Old Testament and, and use it as though it were uh, I don't want to say anything ugly about the Old Testament <laughs> because it's good. It's just that you can't you, you couldn't live it when it was there and you certainly ain't living it now, sir. <laughs> so there's a better way. And that, that way is to have a teacher or a leader who can take you into the truth of God. That teacher then became Jesus. That's why Jesus came, uh, the incarnate one who walked the earth, and he began to say, look at God. This is God, he said. Everything I do, I do it in the power of God. Amen. Okay? Amen. Remember what Jesus came for. To preach, to teach, and heal all who were oppressed of the devil. Amen. I mean, you ought to be able to remember that. So even on, on a, you know, an essay test, you can remember that. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All right, let me finish this by saying this. Prophecy and faith must be connected. Must be connected. Matthew chapter uh, 13. Matthew chapter 13. Uh, now you're going to be surprised because I'm closing with this one. I am. I really am. As the children would say, frill, frill. Uh, Matthew chapter 13. You know the parable of the sower, right? And the Bible says that when prophecy and faith connect, then you, you, you get what you're looking for. Now verse 16 of um, chapter 13 says, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For should I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And what Jesus is saying is that you're living in an age when you have me. You have the full revelation of God, either through Jesus' presence with you or through his written word. You have the full revelation of who God is. There is no reason for you to be in darkness or doubt. Hmm? You know everything there is to know about God. Amen. Somebody say, I don't know everything. That's because you're not doing it. Because everything that you set your hand to do, Amen. it'll work for you. Yeah. Because the knowledge is in you, Amen. but you haven't pulled it out yeah. because you hadn't connected your faith with the faith of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Stand up on your feet. 
<laughs> now listen to me. This is the year of the reset. Every message is going to be talking about reset, something different. When I say something different, it's what you know, but what you didn't know that you knew. <clears throat> and what I want you to understand is that when it comes to prophesying, not the office of the prophet, but prophesying, Prophesying is speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, prophecy can be as simple as this. You can see somebody who looks like they're going through something. And you simply say to them, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, don't worry, it's going to be all right. That's it. You don't have to roll around the floor and jump up and, you know, slather them with all and no, it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And when your faith connects to that word, immediately the power to change. So what are we saying to you today? I want you to start thinking about how you are, uh, uh, Utilizing your faith. What are you doing with the power that you have? How are you uh, able to affect someone else's life? See, this word, this, 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 this gift of prophecy is not for the prophet. It's for the body. And if it doesn't edify, if it doesn't strengthen, if it doesn't encourage, you shouldn't be saying it. Don't tell me that, you know, my clothes don't fit or don't be telling women that the dress is too short or that kind of stuff. That, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a word from God. That's not a word from God. Can't sit there. Don't say that. Can't chew gum. Can't eat candy. Can't. Show it to me. It's not in anybody by hand. But why are we so good at that? Because what we're doing is seeing with our natural eyes. We're seeing in the flesh and we're prophesying all of these things of the devil. Even though you don't call it that. That's exactly what it is. And every time you do it, let me tell you why it's from the devil. It puts somebody in bondage. Word from the Lord should bring some relief, some freedom. Well, pastor, if I don't tell them, then they won't know. Yeah, they'll know. Because they serve the same Jesus you do. They'll know. Oh, yeah, they'll know. You just don't want to be left out. See, I, I could have told them because the Lord already showed me. No, he showed you because you were messing up. So this morning, I, 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 the Bible says that, that when the disciples heard what Jesus had to say, they were dumbfounded by the things that he required of them. He said, listen, Lord, increase our faith. Now, I'm here to tell you this morning, you don't need more faith. You need to utilize the faith that you had. So what I, what I want to do is I want to pray that you will find that open door that you'll find that place where you can step through and start to believe God for who he is and stop believing that you can't do certain things, that you are not able because you're not smart enough, you're not good looking enough, you, you don't have the, the voice or the talent. I'm telling you today, it's a lie from the pit of hell. You can do what God has called you to do. Amen? Amen. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the faith to operate every gift that you've given to your church. 
God, I believe that the anointing is here to cause everyone's eyes to be open, their ears to be open, to be attuned to your word. So God, I thank you even now for the release of faith. And God, I give you praise for it. I thank you for faith that causes healing, faith that causes deliverance, faith that causes the release of resources. God, I thank you for it right now. I thank you for establishing one another as the body so that we can move into what you've called us to do. And I give you praise for it. So let your kingdom be manifested in these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more thing before I turn you over to these officers for taking your money. You may be here and, 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 and uh, you really may not understand whether you're saved or not. What that mean, Pastor? Everybody knows whether they're saved or not. Saying that you believe that Jesus died for your sins, but you don't believe that he's living to keep you saved mm. means that you're not saved. See, we, we, we serve a living Savior. Amen. He is alive in us yes. to create whatever strength or power that we need to live this life. Amen. So if you're having issues and you think that maybe I need to revisit salvation, I'm here for you this morning. Uh, if, if I'm talking to you, I need you to just kind of step out your seat and come on up here. We'll, we'll, we'll fix it for you. If you think. All right, that, family. Uh, once again, thank you so much for being with us today. And at this moment, uh, Bishop is giving the invitation in house. So I'm going to give the invitation here for those who have not yet receive Christ as their personal savior. If we're talking to you today, if this message hits you at some point, if the Holy Spirit is prompting you, listen, it's as simple as A, B, C. First, admit that you're a sinner. Secondly, believe that Christ died for your sins. And thirdly, confess that he is Lord over your life. It's just that simple. Listen, if we're talking to you today, join us in this prayer. It's a simple prayer and it goes just like this. Say, Father, forgive me, a sinner, I have missed the mark and I have fallen short, but I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die in my place. I thank you that when he rose, he rose up with all power just for me. Come into my heart, be Lord over my life. And now I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart that when Jesus was raised from the dead, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the Kingdom family. We're so excited to have you join this Kingdom citizenship. Uh, listen, we are super, super proud of you. The angels in heaven are rejoicing right now. They're throwing a party in your honor because another Kingdom citizen has returned home. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us today, if you would, please do us a favor and text the word SAVED to the number 252-627-9900. Again, text the word SAVED to 252-627-9900. We don't want to spam you, but we do want to connect with you. We want to pray with you. We have some devotional materials that we want to share with you to help you solidify this faith journey because it's a journey that's not meant to be walked alone. It should be walked with community, a fellowship of believers who are heading in the same direction that you are, believing for the same things that you are, okay? Having the same goals, serving the same God that you do because we can encourage one another. Every day is not going to be perfect. Every day is not going to be sunshine and rainbows. There's going to be some rough days, but you need somebody there to let you know or remind you that God's grace is sufficient and that he, he has chosen you for a moment like this. So you are well equipped to handle this moment. You need people to encourage you on that level. All right. And we want to do that for you. And if you're in this area, listen, come check us out. 1246 Pollock Street, downtown New Bern, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. And if you find that we're not your cup of tea, that's cool. There are uh, hundreds, literally a hundred other churches um, in the area that we can connect you with. And if you're not in the New Bern area, let us know that and we'll help you find a church wherever you are. But you need to be uh, with a body of believers 
a community of believers that are believing and praying for the same things that you are so that we can encourage one another on this faith journey. It was not meant to be walked alone. Even Jesus went out and sought the disciples to uh, people from all walks of life, all different types of people, but they all have one common goal and that was to please their savior. All right, guys, that's all the time I have for today. I need to wrap this up and get out of here. Thank you so much once again for joining us today. We pray that you got something out of this word, out of this service. We pray that some part of this ministry touched you in some way today. Um, listen, you guys have an amazing week. And just in case your week is not so amazing, make sure it has an amazing you in it. Listen, go back and rewatch this because there's probably something that you might have missed along the way. All right. All right. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you next time.